Hi, and welcome to the last section of this course. In the previous video, we understood the importance of software testing and were able to write basic tests to improve the software quality. In this section, we're going to improve our social photo website and cover a few interesting topics like application deployment and versioning system. In the first video of this section, we're going to create an RSS feed API to share our application updates. The idea is to display a short list of the last 10 posts present in our homepage. But first, we should understand how the RSS feed works. An RSS stands for Rich Site Summary, often called Really Simple Syndication, and is a format to deliver frequently updated web content. The main benefits of it are to promote the content through applications known as a feed reader or aggregators, such as Feedly.com. With this centralized location, you can easily give the latest updates to your feed's subscribers. The RSS document type definition for an RSS feed might look like this one. Basically, it's an XML document with a principal element called channel to describe the feed's source and several inner elements to show single news. You can find more information on the www.rssboard.org website. Now that you're an expert with requests and responses, you should guess that we're going to create a controller to show our RSS representation. I'm going to create it inside the src slash app slash controller folder, a file called rssfeed.php. The code inside the controller should look like this one. The getPosts method just fetches the last 10 posts from the database. We are using the feedToDisplay variable via dependency injection to set this limit. The indexAction method uses the simple XML element PHP class to define an RSS XML document. With the addChild function, we can append another element to the RSS root tag. We are going to define just a few sections like the channel, a title, a description, and a link. After that, we can start a for each statement, adding every single post as an item element in the XML definition. The HTML special chars function helps to convert special characters, keeping the XML format valid. Finally, we can return a 200 status for a successful request. The response class status code is 200 by default, but declaring it is clearly a good practice. Finally, we can set the response header as XML and return the XML representation. Let's quickly open up the service.php and set up the dependencies. Then open the routing.php to configure a new route for the controller. As you can see, the .rss feed should be outside the firewall to allow a public access. Now it's time to open the browser and see the output. Some browsers automatically recognize the page as an RSS feed source and ask for a subscription. I hope this was useful. We can also inspect the source code of the page to see the whole RSS XML schema.